Here's a cool thing you can do with the rules of grammar that you know so far, that you've learned in class. Here's a sentence. You know this is a sentence. It's got a subject, the man, and a verb, jumps. You can add junk to the end of that sentence. I call this a core sentence because this is just the beginning. You just add to this, but this whole thing is the core sentence now. It's got junk in its trunk. The man jumps off the wall. The man jumps off the wall with his friends. Still, a core sentence with extra junk in the trunk. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine words. I want to show you that even with one core sentence, one tiny little core sentence, you can expand the entire darn thing to a hundred words. Still following the rules of grammar, just taking what you know and running with it. It's not a run-on sentence. It's just a perfectly grammatical sentence. So I'm going to put a comma here. and We're going to put a participial phrase at the end of this core sentence. The ing word is something the man is doing. It begins with an ing word. It's a participial phrase. So the man jumps off the wall with his friends, comma, trying to escape the police. You can add some junk to the end of that participial phrase, and you end up with all that, comma, trying to escape the police who have been chasing the four of them since they robbed that bank back in Fresno. Then period. And we've got nine words, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30 words. And that's just a core sentence, which you would underline. Core sentence with a single participial phrase, a long participial phrase, but not impossible to create yourself. 30 words. So let's see what you can do with just one core sentence and some things you already know how to do. 100 words should be easy. So making an awesome 100 word sentence. Here's a photo from yesterday. This is of uh, this, the search and rescue operation, mostly the search operation for the, the downed plane in Malaysia. So we're going to create a 100 word sentence out of this, or I'll show you how to create one with the things you know how to do. So you know how to do core sentences. The man examines the map. So I'm creating these things about this photo. The man examines the map. Subject, verb, and then junk, the map. The man examines the map. You know how to do a positive phrases. And a positive phrase goes next to a noun. The man is a noun in the core. The map is a noun in the core. The words that you're going to put in the positive phrase are going to be about that noun, the man. So let's say we're creating a positive for the man. And the words that we create need to be able to replace the man in the sentence. So this is an a positive right here. A Vietnamese military officer. If I get rid of the noun, my positive could take over for it. A Vietnamese military officer examines the map. And that works. That's a working a positive. The man examines the map as my core. I could attach to that one a positive. I could attach a second a positive and a third a positive and 27 a positives. These three words here are enough to make this a working a positive for the man. The man, comma, a lonely man, comma, examines the map. I can add junk in the trunk of a lonely man, and I could say a lonely man from a lonely town in Vietnam, and I could change that to be in Vietnam's poorest region. And this all becomes one a positive right here. This whole thing is one a positive for the man. The man, a lonely man from a lonely town in Vietnam's poorest region, examines the map. And these things in this box that I'm putting back here is just junk uh, at the end of the positive. All phrases, all things can have junk at the end to extend them. You know how to do participial phrases. Here's a participial phrase here. You can attach this uh, at the beginning of the core sentence. The man examines the map. Assisting the pilot of the helicopter, comma, the man examines the map. You could put the man here, and you could put this in the middle position between the subject and the verb. The man, comma, assisting the pilot of the helicopter, comma, examines the map. 
You could put this at the end of the core sentence. The man examines the map, comma, assisting the pilot of the helicopter. And just like with the appositives, just like with the appositives, you can put junk at the end of a participial phrase to make it longer. Assisting the pilot of the helicopter in the search for the missing people in the missing plane somewhere off the coast of Vietnam's To Chu Island. The man examines the map. You know punctuation of these things. If you want to put two core sentences and the phrases that attach to that core sentence next to another core sentence and the phrases that attach to that core sentence, you do that with just a comma and or a semicolon. So a core and all of its stuff and a core and all of its stuff joined together by comma and or joined together by a semicolon, wherever the two complete sentences are going to join together. You know to join participial phrases to a core sentence with commas. You know to join a positive phrases to a core sentence with just commas. You know that back to back, if you two, if you put two participial phrases back to back, you just put the word and between them. You know that if you put three things back to back to back, and that could keep going back to back to back to back to back to back to back, you punctuate it as follows. Item one, comma, item two, comma, and item three. So with one core sentence, the man examines the map, you could have, here's the man examines the map, you could structure your sentence as follows about the photo up there. You could have a pair of participial phrases assisting the pilot of the helicopter and trying to keep his eyes open after hours of searching, comma. Now this comma here is going to attach this pair of participial phrases to the core sentence. So we got a comma and then we start the core sentence, the man. Comma. Now we're going to go into a list of a positive phrases. And a positive phrase like a Vietnamese military officer, a lonely man from a lonely town, my brother's father in law, a lover of all things Beatles, the last starfighter, comma and the something, something, something. Then a comma to go back to the core sentence the verb of the core sentence. So after that, the subject, which is a noun, I could do in a positive, a list of a positives, all of them a positives for the man. Go back to the core sentence, examines the map, and then I could end with four participial phrases if I wanted. That's a list. Four participial phrases, an ing word and stuff, an ing word and stuff, an ing word and stuff, and a comma and at the end of that list, the ing word and stuff, and a period. And that's just one core sentence, allowing for all this, this stuff here. I know it's gigantic, and you probably would, wouldn't do this too often, but it still follows the rules of grammar. And it's not a run-on sentence, as long as it's properly punctuated. Where this period is, if you wanted, you could change the period to be a semicolon. You could start the whole process over again. Two participial phrases, core sentence, Four participial phrases, a positive phrases, the whole, the whole mess of it. And you could, that semicolon will allow you to start things over and attach a whole nother monstrous sentence. And you could just keep going and going and going and going. You could have a 40,000 word sentence. There was an entire novel written and it was one complete sentence. So I want you to see that this is something you can do right now. So get to it.